So with that being said, we're going to go into our parasha, try to see uh, really today's world, you know, through the light of the Holy Torah. Now, one of the things that we're doing here is we're starting a new book. We're starting the book of Exodus, Sefer Shemot. And Sefer Shemot, first, first thing that we find out about is a reality check, a reality check of the Jewish people throughout the exile, a reality check to the Jewish people throughout all of history. Well, all of a sudden, after years and years of calm and peace and everything good, our, uh, you know, whatever country hosted us turns into our enemy. Our, our, our friends or what we thought were our friends, our allies turn into our enemies. And this is not something that happened only in Egypt. It just began in Egypt. Anti-Semitism wasn't something that was a, uh, only a one-time thing during the Holocaust. This is literally the history of the Jewish people. And it's one of the tools that God uses in order to actually keep us pure, in order to keep us close to the Torah because many times the Jewish people forget once they uh, God gives them success in the book of Deuteronomy God says uh, don't forget me after I bless you why would we forget God after he blesses us because unfortunately it's the nature of a person to uh, to not be grateful it's one of the most disgusting things in the world when a person gets a lot of good and instead of returning good he returns you evil but this is the nature of people that are uh, you know, not living a life of Torah. And what ends up happening is that sometimes this also affects people that are living a life of Torah, but they forget to say thank you. They forget to appreciate. They forget to do what they promised. And they forget to be grateful either to the one that gave them or the one that created them or both. Now, this is one of the things that unfortunately Am Yisrael made a mistake in. They made a mistake. They didn't listen to Yosef. Uh, the, which was the viceroy of Egypt who told them to stay at Goshen so they would separate themselves from the Egyptians so they don't assimilate, so they don't uh, uh, grab the attention of people, but unfortunately they didn't listen. And they started uh, succeeding more and more and therefore they wanted to expand. No different than what happened to us throughout all of history, whether it was the uh, Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Spaniards, the Greeks, the Romans, the uh, Nazis, Imach Shimam, all of these different nations that hosted us that uh, uh, were at some point, uh, you know, uh, people that we could live with ended up becoming very, very big enemies. To, you know, some of them were enemies right off the bat, some of them enemies later on. But what we saw during the Holocaust for anyone that learned Torah was nothing new. In fact, many of the sages of that time uh, predicted that this was going to happen as a result of the evil actions of the Jewish people, where not evil actions to their friends and to their uh, hosting country uh, per se, but rather evil actions towards their God, their creator, where they abandoned the Torah, where they started living a more secular life, creating Zionism and Reform Judaism and Conservative Judaism and, and all types of different cults and segments uh, that uh, were literally antithetical to the Holy Torah. Now, of course, many of the non-Jews out there that are not familiar with the Torah, not familiar with Judaism altogether, think that Judaism and Zionism are synonymous. But the truth be told is that the two could not be any different from each other. Judaism and Zionism are actually polar opposites. Zionists are not just secularists, they're actually against the Torah. They're communists. They're against the Torah in every aspect as that was their foundational principles. In fact, the... Uh, uh, one of the founders of Zionism, Herzl, he himself converted to Christianity and uh, wanted to, uh, did not even give Brit Milan circumcision to his son, Hans, uh, called them obviously a non-Jewish name and wanted to convert all of the Jewish people to Christianity because he thought that this was a wonderful way to uh, eliminate anti-Semitism by simply eliminating Jews. Now, of course, these evil people did not stop, but today's Zionism is not necessarily the same exact animal as it was when it first started. It's not good today either, but needless to say, it has transformed because there are different parts of Zionism today where there are some Zionists that are religious Jews that are observant, but they, they consider Zionism simply the love of the land and the Jewish people. But the true Zionism, per se, the one that's really uh, causes a lot of problems for the Jewish people and the world at large, that's a Zionism that's against the Torah, that is antithetical to the Torah, that is a communist belief system that simply wants to do nothing uh, but to uh, destroy any belief in God whatsoever. 
So a person has to understand that before they hate, before they love, before they have any opinion about something, at the very least, educate yourself. One of the things that drives me crazy uh, time and time again is when I see people comment on the videos before they even watch them. Uh, they simply decide that they know what the video is going to say just because of the name. I mean, haven't you heard of the expression, don't uh, judge a book by its cover? Apparently, people haven't read enough books in order to even hear the expression. But needless to say, many people jump to conclusions, and this is not for just from the Jewish world. This is the whole world at large. People jump to conclusions. Immediately, people are uh, now feeling bad for the wicked person named Shmuli Boter who considers himself a rabbi and even America's number one rabbi, but the reality is there's no one more wicked than this person who has desecrated the name of God in recent years like he does, his daughter does, with all of the horrible behavior that they have. But he, of course, fiends the attention, loves attention, and in the last few days he was assaulted verbally by a couple of uh, Arabs that uh, said free Palestine. Now, of course, it's never nice to hear some terrorists say free Palestine and tell you that they hate Jews and such and such, but I feel no bad whatsoever for Shmuli Boter, not because of this particular, but that's because he brings this stuff on himself. He brings this stuff on himself. He lives for this. He looks for any attention that he possibly gets, that he can get, regardless of what it takes. If that means supporting homosexuals, that's against the Torah, he'll do that too. He'll support the homosexuals. If that means making vile videos where he's grabbing the crotch of, of some other male member uh, out there, he'll do that. He'll post that online. Now, it's enough that you did something terrible like that. It's even more disgusting that you're actually publicizing this stuff. If it's uh, publicizing his daughter, his daughter's sex shop, in Israel, he'll do that. Why? That gets attention. So the guy is an evil person and is antithetical to the Torah. But of course, there are going to be some people reading the headlines, seeing that, you know, Mr. Shmuli Boter got assaulted by a couple of rabbis that don't like Jews and they feel bad for the guy. The truth is, it's a, this is a person that brought this on himself because he is constantly looking for attention and he will do anything possible for it. Unfortunately, at the time of uh, at the time of the Exodus, the Jewish people made certain sins, made certain sins that put them in a bad situation. Whether it was uh, idolatry, whether it was a uh, abandoning certain uh, uh, laws of the Masoret of the tradition that we have, including circumcision, there are certain things that they did that put them in a bad position. But more than anything else, this all began with the fact that we wanted to become like the Gentiles. We wanted to become like the, uh, uh, like the Egyptians by moving out of Goshen and going into the city. This is obviously a problem that continues to recur. And uh, many times we see that in the beginning, it's all nice. In the beginning, it's interesting. In the beginning, they even befriend us. They do business with us. But it's only a matter of time before Hashem turns on the Esav button and uh, the Goim start to hate us before they decide that it's time to annihilate the Jews and cause another pogrom or, or, or holocaust and so on. This is a repeated story throughout history. And the only thing that a person can do uh, in order to stop uh, this from happening is simply sanctify themselves, learn the Torah, learn from our traditions, learn from our mitzvot, learn from uh, our creator, to, to know how to behave, to know what to do, and sanctify yourself to the point where you have this spiritual protection, especially now where we are in the generation of the Mashiach, where as soon as the Mashiach comes, there's not going to be any more opportunities for a uh, for doing tshuva. This is the last stop on this train that's been going on for thousands of years, and everybody that doesn't do tshuva is literally missing the opportunity of eternity, not just a lifetime. Let me know uh, what you think and make sure to share it because other people need to learn too.